and welcome to Mitigation Journal Beyond Hazards podcast. My name is Rick Rosati, and today I want to talk to you about a new ivory wave of synthetic drugs that's sweeping the country, causing considerable problems for emergency medical service responders, emergency department personnel, and hospital staff. Pump it. Ivory Wave and bath salts are just a few of the names given to new synthetic drugs that are causing intoxication that is similar in compound to ecstasy and methamphetamine. These synthetics are often sold in convenience stores, drug stores, over the internet, and perhaps even in your own neighborhood. They may be labeled as enhanced plant food, and some actually carry the warning that they're not intended for human consumption. However, few, it seems, are heeding that warning, as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the National Institute of Health is making a plea to avoid these substances. They are calling for attention to the growing number of emergency departments, hospital visits, and intensive care admissions based on the use of these materials. As an example of their popularity, deaths from the use of bath salts have increased, as well as In popular culture, YouTube videos highlighting the use of bath salts and other similar products is increasing every day. Not unlike other drugs, these materials can be swallowed, ingested, snorted, smoked, or even injected or otherwise consumed by a growing population that crosses age, economic, and social boundaries. So what's in this stuff? Well, the common chemicals seem to include something called cathinone, and cathinone is a monoamine alkaloid that's similar to ephedrine and methamphetamine. This product has toxic side effects of anorexia, panic attacks, anxiety, irritability, insomnia, and hallucinations. This chemical is also known in other uh, forms as CAT, K-H-A-T, and is found in plant food. Methadrone, a substance known to produce methamphetamine-like reactions in rats, is also commonly present. Patient presentation can span a large spectrum, but in general, bath salts, pump it, and similar drugs have been compared to a combination of ecstasy, cocaine, and methamphetamine. According to both the CDC and NIH, consumption of these and similar products results in symptoms resembling a stimulant overdose. Since these drugs often lack an immediate effect, their users continue to take more to get that desired effect and frequently increase their intake to the point of overdose situations. These can have serious neurologic and cardiovascular impact. Many patients presenting with these uh, after use of these medications or drugs often do present with neurologic or cardiovascular dysfunction, and rhabdomyolysis has also been reported. The major psychiatric component associated with the use of these materials is psychosis, and this is a psychosis that can last for days. Psychotic symptoms include the loss of contact with reality, false beliefs, hallucinations and delusions, and disorganized thinking and speech. As a warning, patients testing positive for bath salt use also test positive for other substances. And if that's not good enough, Intramuscular injection of bath salts is linked to an aggressive cellulitis and necrotizing fasciitis, otherwise known as flesh-eating soft tissue infections. These materials are like methamphetamine, cocaine, and ecstasy, but not exactly. Like meth, bath salts cause a spike in dopamine levels, causing the user to develop a craving very quickly. However, dopamine burnout can occur, and it's usually a factor in increased abuse potential of this drug. Like ecstasy, there is an increase in serotonin. With continued use, there is an eventual inability of the body to react to the serotonin, and this increases the the risk of binging and overdose. Like both meth and ecstasy, chronic use increases the risk of developing personality disorders and cardiovascular dysfunction, including AMI. Pump It has an added twist, however. This product contains methylhexanamine, a chemical that was actually created in 1944 as a nasal decongestant and vasoconstrictor. Side effects or toxic effects are similar to that of caffeine and stimulant overdose and include all the things we've talked about so far, with the added risk of hyperpyrexia due to a very strong thermogenic property. Treatment for people using these substances is mainly supportive and based on symptoms. However, the literature supports the use of sedation, benzodiazepine, 
and antipsychotics. Please refer to your local standards of care and protocols. Because of the risk of polypharmacy use, treatment and recognition of these specific substances may be difficult. Recently, Morbidity and Mortality Weekly report indicated that uh, the scope of the severity of this situation was increasing. As noted in this report, a sampling of 35 patients who reported to a Michigan emergency department had the following findings. All presented with symptomology similar to uh, stimulant intoxication. Some had neurologic symptoms, some had cardiovascular symptoms, many tested positive for other drugs. Hospital admissions include those to the ICU, regular hospital floors, and to psychiatry. There are some unique operational considerations that all must be aware of. There is an increased risk of multiple patients becoming intoxicated with these substances when used in groups or at parties. There may be a risk for multi-patient events. Be on the lookout for commonalities in patient complaints and presentations. I'm Rick Rosati. Thank you for joining us today on Mitigation Journal. Please visit our blog at mitigationjournal.org.